Hello, thank you for joining us. I'm Tamir Geffen, the founder of GoMidgets. We provide a variety of ClearCase, ClearQuest and RTC add-on tools and professional services. I'm happy to host this webinar with Mr. Peter Hack, the ClearCase architect. As a developer, I always wanted to be able to develop rapidly anywhere, even when I'm abroad or have a limited connection to the server. And as an administrator, I always wanted to provide my developers the ability to work in distributed sites and yet to quickly load or update work environments again and again. It's been a repeated request over the last years and I'm happy it's now possible with ClearCase as you will see it soon. I recently tested it by myself and it's working. Before we start, I have some good news for you, ClearCase users. Next week, we will announce a new free edition of our Visual Annotate add-on tool for ClearCase. We decided to grant a free edition to the community of developers working with ClearCase. The free edition provides all features but is limited to 30 minutes a day. If you'd like to get it, just download the tool today and we will announce to all subscribers when it's ready. And this is a message to administrators and to those who take charge of ClearCase. We are very close to the release of a new version of ClearCheck, our continuous health checks monitoring tool for ClearCase VOPs and ClearCase environment. In the upcoming version, we put an emphasis on performance and running time of integrity checks for the files in the VOP database, which is called dbcheck. We found a way to accelerate running time by 10 times. This is especially useful if you have thousands of VOPs or gigantic VOPs and yet you want to be able to run a full scanning cycle every night. And now my last slide, and it's for release managers and developers. We will soon release a new version of our R&D reporter add-on tool. Besides of its new features, it offers now renamed, moved and removed file detection. It can quickly find all hidden files in between the scope of two baselines, UCM streams, views or any combination. This could be very useful if you have to find missing files, or if you have to document hidden files in your release note document, if you do refactoring or if you change your class names and more. You can download the trial version on our website. And now I give the stage to Mr. Peter Huck. Good luck, Peter. Okay, great. Well, what I'm gonna talk about this morning is a new type of view that we're developing for ClearCase. Uh, they are called automatic views and they're currently in an open beta. I should note that although these view types have not been shipping in a product yet, um, we, we can't make a promise to deliver anything. Uh, we are currently in an open beta, but that's no commitment to deliver the actual feature. Any discussion I make about performance is based on our internal configurations and cannot be um, extrapolated to any general purpose results. So today I'm going to talk about the requirements that drove the development of an entirely new type of view for ClearCase. Then I'm going to do a quick overview of the three types of views that already exist as a reference point so you can see how automatic views are similar and different. Then I'm going to go over the automatic view architecture. This is going to help you understand the characteristics of how the view operates and how they may provide advantages in your particular environment. Then I'm going to focus on automatic view features and then finally give a brief discussion of the open beta that's currently available. And we'll have time for questions at the end. So there are a lot of requirements that drove the development of a new type of view. This is a quick summary of those requirements, and I'm going to discuss each of them in more detail in just uh, as we move on. You know, the first basic feature is that customers are asking for dynamic views that work effectively over a wide area network connection. Dynamic views provide very unique features that are essential for the success of many of our customers. And some of these characteristics include the ability to create a view instantly and start using it. With dynamic views, I'm sure you're well aware, you can create the view, 
and you, in a mere matter of seconds, you have full access to all of your um, projects, all of your VOBs. We want to be able to replicate that kind of uh, user experience, except for WAN users as well. Dynamic views also don't require that you know in advance which files you're going to need. With other types of views, snapshot views and web views, you have to specify using load rules the subset of the VOBs or directory hierarchies your view will need access to. And then you have to wait for those um, directory hierarchies to load on the client machine before you can start any work in that view. So just like with dynamic views, automatic views won't require that you do any preloading of files like that. It will dynamically discover as you wander through your file system what files are needed in your view. Dynamic views also dynamically update when you're working on a shared branch with other de developers. So when someone else checks something in on a branch that your config spec selects, you'll see those changes immediately. This is a feature that we may decide to implement in, in automatic views at some point, but the first version of automatic views function in a different way that I'll describe in a little bit. Another advantage of dynamic views is that many features work with any tools, not just clear case aware tools. So for an example, version extended names are accessible to any tool in the operating system, not just tools provided by ClearCase. Dynamic views also have much lower client disk space requirements since they don't store copies of versions on your local disk. Instead, they directly access version files from the storage pools on the VOB servers. Automatic views work in a different way. Um, as you'll see, there's a reason that automatic views have to make copies of files on your local disk, but it turns out that automatic views do that in a very efficient way and manage that storage in such a way that it reduces client-side disk space requirements versus web views or snapshot views. Another advantage of dynamic views is that symbolic links work, even on platforms that don't have native symbolic link support in their file system. That will hold true for automatic views as well. And then finally, dynamic views support what I refer to as authoritative audited builds. Since we have a file system uh, in the kernel, we can monitor all file system activity during builds. And so during a, an audited build, during the build of any target, we notice which files got open for, re for reading and which files got written. And then we assemble that list at the end of the build step and associate that with any of the targets that were built. And so you get this authoritative build of materials of all the versions of files that went into building each individual target. So for companies that need high traceability requirements, this is a unique feature that is invaluable. And I must say that um, I personally find this particularly valuable. There are, there are cases in the deep dark past when before I used ClearCase that you know, some build might not work the way I expected. And sometimes it was virtually impossible to figure out why. And with the audited builds, I always knew what changed between successive builds and I was always, almost always able to figure out why something went wrong. Build correctness is also a benefit. Since we have this bill of materials um, associated with each target, when a rebuild occurs, normal make systems just look at timestamps and they only do rebuilds if some dependency has been changed since the target was built. Since SCM systems, software configuration management systems, are like time machines, it's possible to go backwards in time. And so you end up changing, if you end up changing what your view sees, so you're now seeing an earlier version of one of your source code files, a normal make system won't detect that a rebuild is necessary. But since ClearCase has detailed traceability on what went into the last build, it actually does a version comparison instead of a timestamp-based comparison, and it will rebuild um, if that's the right thing to do. And then finally, Winkin. Winkin is the ability of ClearCase dynamic views to detect that some other user or some other view has already built with exactly the same versions of source files that your view is currently seeing. 
And instead of triggering a rebuild in your view, it will just create a link to that pre-build derived object. And so that can cut down on build time significantly. And for very large projects, that can be a huge difference. So this is a feature that we plan over time to implement for automatic views. It would not be available in an initial version. As you'll see, um, the development of automatic views is going to be incremental. We're providing sub we would provide substantial um, capabilities in an initial release, but we have plans to provide more and more features over time in the future. Another driver for automatic views is improved WAN performance. This is often a request that we get from teams that are using Agile processes, uh, which, by the way, the ClearCase development team switched to many years ago to, to great benefit. Users do not want to have to wait for all files to be loaded on the client machine before using a new view. Very often, if you have a, a very high priority defect that's reported, you want to start getting working on the fix as soon as possible. And if you have to wait minutes, or for very large projects, we've had some customers report that uh, loading a snapshot or a web view could take on the order of an hour. If you don't have to wait that initial amount of time before you get going on tracking down the problem, that can be a significant benefit. In addition, users would prefer not to have to wait for view updates to complete. Um, if you're trying to catch up with changes that other people have made to the VOB or VOBs. Today with snapshot and dynamic views, when you begin a view update operation, you have to wait for that view update operation to complete before you can do any further work in the view. So with automatic views, uh, that is not necessary. As soon as you start the update operation, you can continue using the view. Uh, we also, another way to improve performance is to reduce the amount of work that actually needs to be done. And one way, to, one way automatic views do that is by sharing file contents between multiple views. It's quite common for multiple views to access many of the same versions. If you're working, for example, in a UCM project, you have an integration view and a developer view quite commonly. And usually, 90 to 99 percent of the versions seen in your integration view are the same versions as seen in the developer view. With normal snapshot or web views, you end up with one copy of each version in each view. So if you have 10 views, you might end up with 10 copies of exactly the same version of a file. With automatic views, we automatically detect when one view is choosing the same version of an element as another view. And instead of creating a second copy, it automatically starts sharing the version that was already loaded by the first view. So what's faster than a highly efficient um, WAN copy, file copy protocol? Not have to, having to copy the file at all. So that has a performance implication, and it also reduces the amount of disk space required on the clients. And this is all done transparently to the user. It also utilize, automatic views also utilize improvements we made in uh, web view file fetching that fetches files in parallel, which if, if you've upgraded from version 7.1.2 to version 8.0 of ClearCase, you no doubt notice the improvement in, um, in web view load and up-to-date performance. In some cases, we had seen improvements on the order of 40%. It also supports uh, the off-the-shelf web proxy server configuration that can be done for CCRC. This allows you to configure a web proxy server such as Squid, and that will perform caching of version contents on the proxy server. So if you have a small team working at a remote office, they can set up a proxy server and then share that proxy server. And then only the first member on the team that accesses a given version ends up having to pay the performance price of going to uh, the VOB servers to make the copy of that file. Other users will then pick it up from the local proxy server. We also have requests for um, online offline support. If you use dynamic views, you're no doubt well aware that um, having a constant connection to the VOB servers is essential. There's a lot of constant activity between 
Dynamic View clients and the Bob servers, which is uh, very beneficial for Dynamic View users, but if you're working at a remote site, the latency makes the performance unusable, and if there's a network outage, the Dynamic Views uh, stop working. So with Automatic Views, uh, there is an online and an offline mode. In an offline mode, the view no longer tries to contact the server for any operations at all. Instead, it just works with the client-side information that it, it has built up to that point. So one of the implications of having an offline mode is you need the ability to force the loading of files that you're going to need before they are actually needed. And so I mentioned that automatic views do not require load rules like snapshot views or web views do because you don't have to know in advance what you're going to need access to. The, the automatic view will figure that out as you access files and directories. However, if you plan to go offline, then you have to tell the automatic view the subset of the world that you're going to need access to offline. And so automatic views support optional load rules that you supply and that in the background the automatic view will prefetch any files under those load rules so that by the time you're ready to go offline you already have a complete client-side um, state that will allow you to get access to the files that you need. I should note that this loading occurs in the background so you can continue using the view during this process unhindered and the system will tell you when it's completed loading the files in the background so you know when it's safe to detach from the network. When you're in the offline mode, of course, the automatic view functions in a restricted mode. Operations that require interaction with the Bob servers, let's say, let's say getting metadata associated with a version, uh, would not be possible. But they become available again once you reconnect to the network. Another um, request is the ability to support resumption of interest, interrupted load or update operations. With web views or snapshot views today, if there's some failure in a load, let's say due to a network um, going down in the middle, you have to restart the entire update or load operation. And with automatic views, uh, it uses a mechanism, a new algorithm that allows us to resume interrupted um, updates. So that can be a performance win as well. Security is also a high requirement for automatic views. There are kind of two perspectives on the security. One is server environment security and the other is client environment security. There's growing needs amongst IT shops to ensure the security of deployments of all applications and that certainly includes software development applications. So a couple of the characteristics that we hear commonly for server protections is that um, they, the system should require explicit authentication with the server before access to any server resources are available. Automatic views are a new type of view that's part of the ClearCase remote client and it shares many characteristics with web views. This includes the need for explicit authentication. So to get access to any VOBs, you have to log in to the CCRC WAN server with your operating system credentials on the server. So your username and password or um, smart card. And this explicit authentication, you know, once you've authenticated successfully, then gives you access to the VOBs that are hosted through that CCRC WAN server machine. In addition, Security requirements often require that the servers be placed behind firewalls. With dynamic views, that can be a bit of a challenge because they, dynamic views use ephemeral ports, and so you can end up with a large number of open network ports between the client and the servers, and there's no way to restrict it to a particular port range. Just like web views, automatic views use HTTP or HTTPS. Use only a single port which makes it trivial to place uh, CCRC servers behind a firewall. And it, another requirement is that data in motion be encrypted. So you can use HTTPS in addition to HTTP, which will cause all of the network communication between the client and the server to be encrypted. 
from a client perspective, uh, managing the security involves a number of things. Number one, with automatic views, we no longer have um, open network ports, incoming network ports running on the client machine. We also don't have any privileged processes. If you're running a dynamic view or a snapshot view client, which I sometimes refer to as the clear case local client, um, there are processes like the ALBD server, the Atria Location Broker Daemon, that uh, is running constantly. And um, that can sometimes raise red flags during security audits until people understand what it is. The automatic view environment is the same as the CCRC environment that you know with web views. And so there's no privileged process running on the client machine. In addition, providing tight protections of files on the client disk is a requirement. And so automatic views, as implied earlier, they make copies of versioned files from the VOB server onto the local client disk. But they always make them only accessible to the owner of the view. So the default configuration is that you're, you end up with very tight security of all artifacts on the client disk. Another requirement that we hear from customers is a reduced, they, they want to reduce the impact on IT organizations, uh, the cost of managing the client machines. They would like to reduce the requirement that client machines be part of a domain. And so just like with web views and CCRC, an automatic view client machine does not have to be part of a Windows domain or a common identity space that's shared by all Unix systems. So this can make it easier to manage a, a large number of client machines. As noted earlier, uh, automatic view clients must explicitly authenticate with the server, so that's another benefit. And IT doesn't want to see these privileged services running on the client machine whenever possible. And that also has the side effect of not requiring the periodic change of the ALBD password that some deployments of ClearCase have to grapple with on a regular basis. Since there's no ALBD service running on the client machine, there's no need to have a special identity on the client machine that has a password you need to change. So again, this is a quick summary of what I just ran through. You know, again, clients would love it if we just provided all the features of dynamic views over a WAN client. As we go through a discussion of the system in more detail, you'll see that we can implement a significant subset of dynamic view features, but only a subset, and we'll see why in a bit. So if we look at the overarching requirements for, dynamic, for automatic views, the top requirement is that we provide dynamic view-like features. But there are other requirements that are higher priority, and these are potentially restricting requirements. We have to have automatic views function effectively over a wide area network connection. So it has to tolerate a high latency between the client and the server. If there's a feature that can't function over a high latency network connection, that won't be part of automatic views. In addition, security is an overriding requirement for automatic views. So if there's a feature that would um, compromise security or reduce the security of the client environment, then that would not be included as part of the automatic view implementation. Now I'm going to go over a brief discussion of the existing view types to provide a basis for comparing against how automatic views function. I assume that most customers have used uh, ClearCase at this point. So what I'm going to do first is pause here to do a brief survey of the use of view types with ClearCase. Mm -hmm. So Tamir, um, can we put up the first couple of questions from the polling? Peter, okay, or do you, do you want uh, more questions? If you could just give me the results quickly. Uh, I can try, just a second. Okay, <laughs> all right, thank you. I can't see them, perhaps you could read the results, sorry. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, just a second. And the last one. Okay. So it looks like uh, most users are using dynamic views. A great majority are using snapshot views, and about half are using uh, web views. Great. Thank you. So this is a very high-level summary of what ClearCase provides. Uh, I'm not going to spend much time on this because I think pretty much everyone in the call knows ClearCase very well. But uh, ClearCase has version control components that tracks changes to versions over time. It manages these in elements or version histories. Uh, it allows you to merge changes made in one branch to another branch very easily. And all of this information is stored in a version object base, or a VOB. Uh, this along with metadata. The VOB consists of a, data, a commercial database, as well as a number of, uh, clear, uh, a number of pools, which are referenced, referenced here by these shared folders. And we store the file contents in these um, storage pools. Then workspace management is another responsibility that ClearCase has, and that's providing access then to a consistent configuration of versions in a workspace, or as ClearCase calls them, views. A view consists of a database that determines which versions should be selected. Um, for copy-based views, the database also records the information of exactly which version was loaded of each file. And then it has, uh, for, for snapshot and web views, a copy area, which is to the directory hierarchy where the copies of the versions of files that you ask to be loaded will be stored. Then there's a process management component of ClearCase that provides the ability to automate and enforce your process. There's a variety of different types of metadata, labels, branches, attributes, hyperlinks, triggers, and locks. They can all be used um, to implement your process. And then final, finally, build management tools include ClearMake, um, the Ant plugin that we have, and the clear audit tool that provide the build auditing that we referred to earlier. So let's take a look at how dynamic views function. So some characteristics of dynamic views is that they're part of the full ClearCase client, or what I sometimes refer to as the ClearCase local client, or CCLC. The local in that term implies that the client must be on the same local area network as the VOBs that they're trying to access to. This is because the ClearCase local client environment does very frequent communication with other servers on the network. This includes the ALBD server on remote machines, it includes the registry server, it includes the VOB server processes themselves. So a single check-in operation in some cases might involve on the order of 100 to 150 remote procedure calls and uh, obviously for a single file. So obviously if your network connection between the client and the server is slow, paying that price 100 times is going to slow down the performance of an operation like a check-in dramatically. So that's why having a high performance network connection is essential for using dynamic views. Dynamic views include a kernel file system, and this allows us to provide some of the very unique features that we do with dynamic views. It provides remote access to versions. So as you can see, there's a workspace or a dynamic view represented in the larger pale green box. And that, that workspace, that view, consists of file names that you can get access to. But there are arrows from the view into the uh, remote VOB storage. And that's to point out the fact that with dynamic views, it never makes copies of versioned files on the client disk. Instead, if someone, instead a dynamic view constructs what I refer to as a virtual directory namespace. From a user's perspective, it appears as if the files are on the local disk. Um, what's really happening is the MVFS is working with the view server process to construct a virtual namespace 
that the user can wander about. They can CD around these different directories. And when they access a version file, the MVFS works with the view server to figure out which version of an element that file name refers to. It uses the config spec of the view to do that. Then it computes where that version exists on the remote Bob storage and then uses NFS or SMB to get access directly to that version contents. So a copy of that version never exists on the client disk. Some of the files in the dynamic view picture here are opaque. Um, there are two files in a folder that are opaque and that's to refer to the fact that dynamic views access version files remotely but you have view private files that do exist on the client disk. So when you compile something, it creates, let's say, a .o file, which is not a versioned file. That exists only on the client disk in the dynamic view. It's not visible to other users. So dynamic views transparently manage mixing of remote files that are under version control along with uh, local files which might be view private or might be checked out files. This characteristic of uh, dynamic views allows it to very efficiently support massive workspaces. We see customers with extremely large uh, code bases that need dynamic views because creating copies of all the versions in a given project would take a tremendous amount of time. And so the ma with massive workspaces, you only access the files that you actually need. Um, the ones that you never end up touching are never part of that view's uh, knowledge. As noted earlier, dynamic views also support dynamic change tracking. So if a user checks in a new version of a file, for instance, the dynamic view automatically detects that and updates the version that you're seeing in your view without any action on your part. And then, because we have the kernel component, uh, we have the authoritative build auditing support, as we discussed earlier. Now, as we move from dynamic views to snapshot views, you'll see that the direction of the arrows changes. And this is to, um, to indicate that copies have to be made to the client disk with snapshot views. Snapshot views exist, again, as part of the ClearCase local client environment which means that they have to be relatively close to the Bob servers to perform adequately. And when you create a snapshot view, you supply a set of load rules, um, a set of directory hierarchies that you want the view to make copies of on your client disk immediately. And then it makes copies of these versions. It, mer it manages them existing with checked out versions as well as view private files in that um, directory hierarchy and uh, one characteristic of snapshot views is that once you've completed a load you don't need constant access to the VOBs like you would with dynamic views so if there's a network outage of some sort you can still have access to um, the versions in your copy area but of course you wouldn't be able to do things like checkouts and check-ins now let's look at web views Web views have a snapshot view that still exists behind the scenes, but there's a web server between the um, VOB servers and, the snap and that backing snapshot view and the copy area that exists on the client machine. So the client, the client exists in, as part of the ClearCase remote client. It has a protocol that is designed to function effectively over a wide area network connection. So for instance, I mentioned a checkout in a dynamic view or a snapshot view might entail a hundred round trips between the client and the server to complete just a single checkout, checkout operation. With um, CCRC, that is designed to be much more tolerant of a high latency network. So a single checkout operation involves only a single round trip between the client machine and the server machine. So as it turns out, there is one round trip between the CCRC client and the web server. The backing snapshot view still has to do the 100 remote procedure calls to the VOB servers. But from the client perspective, uh, the, the, 
uh, it was a very fast operation because the backing snapshot view is going to be very close to the Bob servers. So it functions quite effectively. But again, like snapshot views, copies of all the needed versions are made to the client machine and made in the copy area. This process of loading the copy area is limited by network bandwidth, and uh, so it can take a while, especially for large projects, before all the files exist on the client machine and you can start using your view. Now let's look at how automatic views change that. So again, automatic views are part of the ClearCase remote client environment. So it's a lightweight client environment that's a very small install footprint. One of the things that we introduced with automatic views is the presence of the MVFS in the CCRC client. So the ClearCase version aware file system, the multi-version file system or MVFS is included as part of the ClearCase remote client package. And it's optionally installable, so you won't have to install support for it if you don't need it. But it also includes a, a new process that we'll go into uh, when we look at the architecture a bit more that provides some of the background processing capabilities. So, these, so the automatic view can be performing functions um, on behalf of the user and the user does not have to wait for those operations to complete. So in this picture, I'm showing how the view copy area now has some opaque files and some semi-transparent files and directories. This is to indicate that the MVFS is involved with constructing a virtual namespace just like it does with dynamic views. If you look at the, if you look at the disk, uh, the copy area of a snapshot view or a web view, you're going to see the directory structure that you would expect to see. You know, you're going to end up seeing Bob root directories and subdirectories under that. So the layout on the local disk is exactly as the user would expect. With dynamic views, I mentioned that the MVFS works with the view server to construct a virtual namespace. It, it's, the directory structure exists only in the mind of the MVFS and the view server, but from the user's perspective, it looks real. The same holds true for automatic views. The MVFS construct virtual namespace for each view, and to the user, it looks as if all of those directories exist on the local disk, and all the files exist on the local disk. They may or they may not. The views end up sharing version contents that have been loaded by other views. And so you end up with, as I mentioned earlier, smaller disk space requirements on the client and better performance. It supports what I refer to as on-demand fetching. So when you first wander into an automatic view, by default, it hasn't loaded any versions that you need. Instead, it loads them on demand. So the first time you access a particular file, the automatic view checks to see if that version has already been copied to the local disk. And if not, it goes to the CCRC WAN server, the web server in this picture, and it requests a copy of that given version and then places it on the client disk and then returns to the kernel request. So from a user's perspective, there might be a brief pause the first time they access a version, but there's no further indication that the file wasn't originally on the client disk. And from that point on, it's then cached on the client disk. So successive attempts to access the same version will always find them on the local disk. But what this means is that you can still support very large workspaces effectively uh, with automatic views. It does sparse loading. It only accesses, it only makes copies of the versions that you actually need. And for very large uh, code bases, very often you only need access to a small subset of the files and automatic views auto automatically figure out over time what subset is necessary for your work and you only end up with that subset on the client disk. In addition, um, it shares a lot of the WAN-friendly protocol that WebViews do with CCRC, and it introduces a new protocol 
uh, to very efficiently manage the virtual namespace as well as copying files to the client machine. Now we'll dive into the architecture a little bit a little bit more. And the goal here is to help you understand how the system functions so you might be able to predict how the system will function in your particular environment and where it might provide advantages. So I have kind of a trick question at the beginning here. What is the ClearCase Remote Client or CCRC? When I ask a lot of customers that question, this is the picture that they have in their mind. They think of the graphical user interface as being CCRC. It's a good answer, but it's not correct. CCRC, a remote client environment. And the thing that makes it remote is the fact that it supports web views. And web views have an efficient WAN friendly protocol for communicating with the servers. This is in contrast to the ClearCase local client or CCLC, which supports dynamic views and snapshot views and has this characteristic I mentioned earlier where there are many remote procedure calls between the client and the servers even to perform a single operation. And so they have to be close to the server in order to perform adequately. So it's the WAN friendly protocol associated with CCRC in web views that makes the client environment remote. So automatic views extends the remote client environment and adds a second view type in addition to web views to the remote client. If you've used CCRC before, you'll no doubt know that the client footprint of the remote client is much smaller than the ClearCase local client. It has many fewer components. It's easier and quicker to install. It's easier and quicker to administer as well. And that will remain true once we add automatic views. One, a couple of things to point out is the CTE, or I guess, let me go back one slide. The user interface that ships with the ClearCase remote client is not the ClearCase remote client. It's just the GUI. And what we did in version 8.0 is we gave that GUI a name. We called it the Clear Team Explorer. The Clear Team Explorer, as of ClearCase 8.0, also is included with the ClearCase local client because we added support for dynamic views. So now you can use the same GUI, this, the same Clear Team Explorer, whether you're using web views in CCRC or, what, or if you're using dynamic views in CCLC. So if we now look at the architecture picture, you'll see that the CTE box is included in both the ClearCase local client as well as the ClearCase remote client. So that's to imply that it supports both web views in CCRC and dynamic views in CCLC. So with CCRC today, it includes support for web views. It includes the Clear Team Explorer, and it also includes our clear tool, which is the WAN friendly um, command line interface for web views. With automatic views, we add the MVFS and we add a new process we refer to as the R view agent or the remote view agent. This is kind of the equivalent of the view server for dynamic views. This R view agent, however, does not have any open incoming network ports. So it, it's distinct in that way from the view server. Since automatic views are an extension to the ClearCase remote client environment, the graphical user interface for automatic views is CTE, the Clear Team Explorer, and the command line interface to automatic views will, will be our Clear tool. Over time, we may add support for ClearMake to the ClearCase remote client environment. So now if we highlight the specifics of the automatic view components from the last slide, you'll see the CCRC WAN server is off to the right. There's an optional proxy server between the CCRC client and the CCRC WAN server. And then on the left-hand side, in the dashed, within the dashed box, is 
the CCRC environment, the Clear Case Remote Client environment that's installed on the client machine. In the upper right hand corner of that box you'll see CTE and our Clear Tool, the two client components that are included that the user has access to. There's a web view component, so CCRC will continue to support web views even if in automatic views are installed and the user can choose which they wish to use. It now includes the multi-version file system, the MVFS, which is an extension to the standard file system in the kernel on the client machine. The MVFS ends up getting handed any file system references into the automatic view. So if you're a CTE process or let's say you're a non-clear case application, you're compiling something uh, that exists in your automatic views, your, comp your compiler is going to be accessing version files through the file system. The MVFS is going to be presenting the virtual namespace that it constructed that makes the files appear as if they're on the local disk, even if they're not. The MVFS then communicates with this new process called the RView agent. The RView agent manages the client-side state of the automatic view. So it tracks which versions have been accessed and copied to the local disk. It knows which files are view private and have to be managed in that appropriate way. It knows which files have been checked out and have to be managed specially like that. And it keeps all of this information in a local client-side database. There is one of these databases for each view. But multiple views, there is one RView agent for each view on the client machine as well. So in this picture, you'll see there's an RView agent running for view A and an RView agent running for view B. The MVFS is talking to both of them depending on which view the user is accessing at a given point in time. So each view has its own client-side database, but they share what is shown here as a shared clear text cache. Clear text is ClearCase's terminology for an uncompressed version of a version file. So you, if you use ClearCase, you're no doubt aware that many uh, versions of files will be stored in a compressed form. It might be deltas between successive versions, it could be a zipped form. It, it depends on the type of element that you create. But in order to access the contents of a version, we have to uncompress those. And we call that uncompressed form clear text. So what happens when a file is accessed in an automatic view is the client application, let's say the compiler, tries to open foo.c. The standard file system sees that foo.c exists in an automatic view. So it hands off the path name to foo.c to the MVFS. The MVFS will then contact the appropriate RView agent if the MVFS does not already have an entry in its cache for foo.c. And it will ask the RView agent for, the path, for a path name to the file that represents the correct version of foo.c. The RView agent will then consult its cache, and if it doesn't have a cache entry, it might look in its database for foo.c. If it doesn't yet know about it, it then realizes that it has to go back to the CCRC WAN server to determine which version of foo.c uh, this view should see, and then it looks in its shared clear text cache to see if that version already exists on the client disk. If not, it makes a request to the remote CCRC WAN server for a copy of that uh, version file, and it places it in the shared clear text cache. If the second view then accesses the same version of foo.c, it will find that when it looks in the shared clear text cache, the version is already there, and it doesn't have to go back to the CCRC WAN server to make a copy of the file. So this is how the, the sharing happens across the view. It's really transparent to the user. So this cache will, will grow over time. Now what I described was the on-demand fetching style that um, you, can, you can utilize with automatic views. I also mentioned earlier that we support an offline mode. In the offline mode, you have to tell 
each of the views which files you're going to need before disconnecting from the network. And so automatic views support optional load rules. If a user supplies an optional load rule or multiple rules, the, they get passed to the RView agent. The user can continue using the view unfettered while this loading happens. But in the background, the RView agent will evaluate the directory hierarchy under each of those load rules. It will figure out which versions are visible, and it will make sure that copies of all of those versions exist in the shared clear text cache. If it sees a version of bar.c needs to be accessed, then it will fetch a copy if it doesn't already exist in the shared clear text cache. When this process completes, so now all copies are, all, are on the client disk that might be needed, then the user gets an indication that the background loading operation has completed and the, that will give them a clue that it's now safe to disconnect from the network. So maybe before you go, if you're working in the office and you're, you want to leave for home, um, you can provide load rules and when the load rules all complete then you know it's safe to unplug your laptop and head, head for home. So again, it's not necessary to supply load rules, but an option if need be. Now a second potential benefit load rules have is performance-wise. If you have an idea that you're likely to need some files at some point in the future, if you can tell the RView agent about this and it fetches them in the background before you actually need them, then by the time you actually need them, they're probably already on the local file system and you won't have to pay the price of a round trip to the WAN server to fetch the file on demand. So there are ways to configure the system as needed by your users and uh, you can affect the performance, improve the performance based on how you use it. So let's look quickly at some of the automatic view features. If you use uh, dynamic views on Unix, you'll know that the, the oh, sorry, if you use dynamic views on Windows, you'll no doubt know that the dynamic views show up under the M drive. Automatic views use the R drive, which stands for remote. And so you can, you know, our intent is to support both dynamic views and automatic views on the same machine simultaneously if need be. I believe most users will use one or the other, uh, not both simultaneously. But in order to keep them separate, we have a separate drive letter for automatic views and for um, dynamic views. And on Unix, the view root directory would be slash rview instead of slash view. One important difference uh, of automatic views versus dynamic views is only views owned by a given user are visible in their view root directory. So if you have multiple users on the same machine, I will be able to see my views, but not your views. You would be able to see your views, but not my views in the view root, view root directory. In addition, Automatic views support per view VOB mounts. With dynamic views, if, any view, if you mount any VOB, all views will see that VOB. With automatic views, each view specifies which VOBs it wants mounted, and that has no impact on the set of mounted VOBs seen by other automatic views on that, that machine. So here's an example of creating an automatic view through the ClearTeam Explorer. You can see that there's a client-side view storage location, which is not surprising. That's just like you'd see with other views. But there's this additional piece that is the shared clear text cache location. That's something that you normally wouldn't change because that's used by all automatic views on, on that same machine. And you want that to be the same for all of your automatic views. That allows them to share the clear text between all those views. However, it might be that your C, your C drive is small and you have a very large D drive. So having the ability to change this location allows you to take advantage of larger disks you might have on your client, but this should be treated as a set and forget kind of uh, feature. Once you change it, you should leave it alone so that future views all use the same clear text cache. Here's an example of the defining the set of VOBs that will be mounted for your given view. 
So you can see that this is now part of the view configuration. And so one view could mount these two bobs that are checked here, and a second view might have a completely disparate set of bobs mounted for that view, depending on the work that needs to be done. So this means that users won't have their views cluttered by bob tags that they, don't, that they will never need access to in that view. And here's how the automatic view then looks in the ClearTeam Explorer. It's really almost, it's difficult to distinguish from web views. It just looks like another regular type of view, even though the behavior under the covers is quite different. So I just wanted to highlight some of the things that we're trying to target improving with automatic views. This is a typical workflow for developers. Uh, when developers start a new task, they have to create a view. They then start exploring and reading files. They'll check out files that they need to modify. Then they'll edit, build, debug, check them in, and they may iterate over that many times. And then at some point, they get a consistent set of changes that might address the task that they need to complete. So they'll update their, they'll deliver their changes and update their view. The items here that are colored in red are targets of uh, improvements in performance for automatic views. As I mentioned, creating, a view, creating an automatic view is very, very quick. You don't have to wait for files to be loaded on the client disk before you uh, start using the view. So exploring and reading files uh, can be done incrementally. You can start using the view in seconds instead of minutes or hours. Um, we will dynamically fetch what's necessary so you don't have to preload everything, but we support load rules if you want, so that allows you to control how efficiently the uh, view will prefetch things for you. Checkout files and check-in files. In the longer term, we have some plans to provide a higher performance check-in and check-out operation. And then update views. When you update, since um, I mentioned automatic views are not going to support the same kind of dynamic mode that dynamic views do. Instead, they have what's, what's referred to as an implicit time rule. When you create the view, it's going to make copies of files as of that point in time. This is to avoid a problem where, let's say I created a view yesterday, and I looked at foo.c yesterday. Now let's say there's a dependent foo.h, but I didn't look at foo.h for the first time until today. So there's 24 hour difference between when I fetched foo.c and foo.h. Let's say someone checked in an incompatible change to foo.c and foo.h overnight. I would pick up the later version of foo.h, which is not compatible with the version of foo.c I picked up yesterday. And it might not even compile. So there's an implicit time rule associated with automatic views. I will always only pick up versions that are relative to that point in time. So I'll pick up the version of foo.h that's consistent with the version of foo.c I accessed yesterday. So you're kind of time, which is important for providing consistency. However, there has to be a way for your view to update itself to the current time. And so just like with snapshot and web views, there's an update operation for automatic views. And what that does is it advances this implicit time rule to be the current time and then reevaluates all of the names in your view to see if any of them have changed since the last time you did an update. This is done in the background. The user does not have to wait for this operation to complete. They can continue using the view as soon as they invoke the update command, even though it's processing it in the background. So it's very efficient from a user pers perspective. So these slides will be available for download that you can look at at your leisure, but we have a combination of features and improvements here that are targeting developer productivity and performance. And we believe the combination of these things will provide a very uh, appealing option for views for users of ClearCase. So just quickly, what's not in automatic views? With dynamic views, you can access dynamic views from multiple client machines. With automatic views, that's not the case. You can only access the automatic view from the machine on which it's created. In addition, 
Dynamic views allow multiple users to access that single dynamic view, depending on the permissions used when creating the view. With automatic views, only the view owner has access to the view, and this is done for security reasons. We also don't support uh, shareable derived objects, at least initially, and we also don't have direct access to storage pools. Instead, we use HTTP or HTTPS to make copies on the client disk. We have an open beta that's been available for uh, over a month now, actually a couple of months. It's based on 801, and we support frozen mode, we support the update operation, the shared clear text cache I mentioned. It only supports Windows clients and Windows servers. Uh, over time, we, we plan to expand that. It currently only supports base clear case, although uh, a subset of UCM operations are supported. It includes support for the Clear Team Explorer GUI, optional load rules, and what we expect to provide before the initial version shifts is offline mode, uh, hijacks, and full UCM support. And then looking forward, um, we're looking at providing support for the command line, our clear tool, Unix clients and servers, and you can see some of the additional features that we would like to add over time. Our prioritization of this will be based on customer feedback. So that's a, a quick overview. Uh, I included here the URL to the open beta download site. So this is available today if you're interested and you can try it out and we'd welcome any feedback here. So I realize it's a little past the top of the hour, but I'll open it up for questions if people have any. I, I know one of the questions was there were some uh, question. Some people were saying that they were hearing that uh, ClearCase was approaching end of life, and I'm not sure where these rumors come from. Uh, I, cer I certainly know that uh, some competitive products are not uh, are, are certainly spreading rumors like that. But we certainly have. Uh, I think ClearCase has a very bright future. It has some very very unique capabilities that we're not going to see ever in any other SCM system, and that includes SCM systems from Rational. So for instance, dynamic views are, are never going to be available for any other SCM system, I'm, I'm quite confident. Features like uh, multi-site, the flexibility associated with multi-site is uh, quite, quite valuable, and that's something that we, for instance, never plan to implement with Rational Team Concert. So there are characteristics of certain software or hardware development projects that make it better suited for one SCM system or another. And Rational realizes that, which is why we have uh, multiple SCM systems. The more complex your product, the more complex your process, for instance, the more likely it is that you're going to need uh, something as powerful as ClearCase. One of the things I should notice, I should note is that Rational recognize that it's very difficult sometimes to determine what's the best SCM solution, even within our own set of options. And so they interest, introduced a new type of license uh, that we sometimes refer to as the one SCM license. This license allows you to um, purchase a single license but it gives you access to any of the SCM systems that Rational supports, whether that's ClearCase, or Rational Team Concert SCM, or um, Synergy. And you can pick and choose what's appropriate for a given project without, have to get, without having to get any additional licensing. So it gives you a great deal of flexibility, and it's kind of an, an acknowledgement that it's very difficult in advance, in some cases, to determine what's the appropriate solution for any given software system. So, so hopefully that clears up some of the confusion around uh, the messaging associated with uh, our with ClearCase. I'm trying to remember what the other question was. I remember the question about the combination of uh, of uh, server version 8 and the clients of version uh, 7, 1, 2. Oh, okay, thanks. Yes, yeah, so ClearCase has always had uh, a mechanism that allows you to use earlier clients with later servers. So you can upgrade your servers to something like 8.0, 
and 7.1.2 clients can continue to access the VOBs and the views on the 8.0 system. So that remains true. In 8.0, we actually introduced the opposite as well, so that you can upgrade your clients before you upgrade your servers, so that 8.x clients can get access to 7.1.2 servers. So one of the interesting side effects of this is that if you have your VOB infrastructure still running on 7.1.2, which by the way goes out of support uh, later this month, uh, and so I would encourage everyone to upgrade to 8.x. You can, even if you have your VOB still running 7.1.2, you can upgrade your clients to 8.x, and this includes the CCRC WAN server, which means that you can use later versions of CCRC with earlier versions of ClearCase VOBs. So let's say you wanted to try out automatic views. Even though automatic, the automatic view open beta is layered on top of an 801 um, fixed base, you can have an 801 CCRC WAN server accessing VOBs running on earlier versions of ClearCase, and that will still work. So this is an added degree of flexibility in your deployment options. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. We're pretty excited about automatic views. They address the requests of a lot of customers over many years. Um, so we, we hope that you try out the open beta. We've, I should note that we've already gotten feedback from customers about the open beta. We've addressed some performance problems and uh, a, a notable functional problem. So it's already been beneficial to us to have customers uh, utilize this. So thanks for your time and I look forward to interacting with you in the future. Yeah, thank you, Peter, and thank you all for joining us. I hope you find it beneficial. I'd like to remind you that next week we deliver another webinar about some of the hidden features in, uh, in ClearCase 8, and uh, you are welcome. So take care and have a nice day. Bye-bye.